Hey there, everybody. Uh, I am going to be drawing live today. Just give me about two minutes here just to get everything set up. Um, if you haven't seen one of these before, you can ask me questions on YouTube or Facebook comments, and I will do my best to answer. If I miss your question, because um, sometimes the feed moves pretty fast, feel free to ask again. Um, I'm not trying to ignore you. I just might have missed it. And all right, all right, cool. So it looks like everything is up and rolling. All right, nice. So today what I'm gonna be working on is a Flintstones parody illustration. Um, nothing groundbreaking here. I just thought it would be fun. Oh, that's my dog. I just thought it'd be fun to do the Flintstones like as actual cavemen and just kind of nuts. Um, I didn't have the courage to do that with the ladies, though, so we kept them kept them looking pretty nice. Uh, all right, let me grab my glove. <clears throat> so I'm going to be doing this in Clip Studio Paint. Sometimes I use Photoshop to color, but I find that, especially when broadcasting live like this, it's a lot easier for me to work in Clip Studio Paint because there's so many things in it that are quicker shortcuts, so I don't have to think quite as much, um, and I don't have to switch layers quite as much either, so it can be handy. Um, all right, so as, as normal, uh, I have done the flats already, so that means I've colored in just the basic shapes, and these colors are completely random here. Um, I'm making that a reference layer so that I can quickly select any of the shapes to start coloring. So, um, There we go. Hey, uh, hey, Brian. Thanks a lot. Um, so what I like to do first, uh, because I'm I'm actually not great at picking colors. I like to identify which pieces of this image I know are going to be a certain color, and start with them, and then build the rest of the piece off of that. So I know that we want Dino to be the kind of pinkish purple that he is, right? So I'm going to start there. And normally what I do is grab, in, rather than just fill that in flat, um, I like to get a soft airbrush. And work with the color this way. Uh, that way, very quickly, I can give sort of a variation of color um, rather than making it look just like sort of like a flat vector drawing. Hey, thanks a lot, Patrick. Uh, so Scott mentions the volume seems low. Let me try to figure that out real, real quick. You talking about the volume of my voice? I noticed that too. I think I gotta turn my mic up just a second. Hmm. Is that any better? Hey, I want to answer Ada's question here, asking what control pad I'm using. I'm guessing you're talking about this thing over here. Um, this is the Nostromo Orb Weaver, I think it's called. It's actually made for gamers, but I find it's awesome uh, for for drawing in Photoshop and um, Manga Studio because you can program so many different kind of uh, keywords and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, not keywords, you know what I mean. Shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts. All right, cool. So also I want to note that I usually start, instead of painting on like a white canvas, I like to just do sort of a dull light blue. Because um, the uh, two reasons. One, the white can be kind of intimidating. Um, and also a lot of things look cool if they blend towards blue, like his teeth here, for example. 
So, I'm going to go in here. All right, so let me grab a texture brush here. And for a drawing like this, uh, because I spent a lot of time on the line work, I want to try to let the line work do most of the rendering. So. What that means is I don't want to let the coloring stage kind of overpower what's going on in the line work. So that that's why I try to use like a really uh, really textured brush in some areas because just that pass usually is enough um, to get the information down that we need. Oh, everybody knows Fred Flintstone's tie is blue. Come on. Come on, Alan. Hey, thanks a lot for the compliment, Elvin. Um, so I'm going to, I wanted to bring up something that I was talking about with an artist friend of mine today. If anybody has any questions during that, feel free to interrupt me and I'll just kind of step off my rant for a second. Uh, I, I don't know if he would want me to give his name, but uh, he's a really talented artist and uh, really accomplished. And he called me because he needed help uh, on a quote. And that conversation led to all kinds of cool stuff that I learned. And, um, and I hope he learned some things as well. And I wanted to make sure that anybody listening who maybe is a freelance artist or considering being an artist uh, full time, it's so important to build up a network of, you know, a dozen designers and artists that you can really trust. Um, not, not just because sometimes that leads to work, uh, but mostly just because there's so much misinformation out there um, about what to charge or, or how to deal with clients or with this business or whatever. That until you really talk to somebody that you know and trust one on one. Um, that's when you're going to get the real information that sticks with you and that's really valuable. Uh, because often when you're just following artists online, um, you can kind of paint an inaccurate picture of what they are actually accomplishing, you know, because cause our online personas are always trying to convey uh, a higher level of success, you know. Um, and even if even if you're not intentionally doing that, what you're not seeing are the uh, the failures, for example, or even failure is probably too strong of a word. But you're not seeing the um, some of the risks that were taken or the things that didn't pay off, if that makes sense. Uh, so in this case here, when I was talking with my friend, you know, and he was talking about a job that uh, that he had done on spec, you know, and and it. Um, you kind of get this assumption that any professional does not work on spec ever, ever, ever. And I, I don't think, I think you should fight it with every fiber of your being, of course. But there are definitely exceptions, you know, um, as there is with anything. So, so anyway. Uh, but, it, but anyway, so my friend told me, um, when he's giving out prices to people, when he's coming up with quotes... He always asks himself whether or not that or doing that job is worth him taking away time from himself, like because you are you're basically renting an artist's time, you know. And if somebody contacts you and they want to pay you only a hundred bucks for something, you got to sit down and realize that if you took an afternoon you could probably figure out a way to draw something and turn that into a hundred bucks. 
and it would be a, a lot more valuable because that thing that you're drawing for yourself is something that you're really excited about. Uh, it's going to be a much better product, and that is the thing that's going to lead to bigger clients and more rewarding jobs, basically. Anyway, that's that. I've got a story I want to tell in a little bit too, but let me get um, let me get into this piece a little bit more. Hey, uh, um, I'm sorry. Is it Hugh? I'm not sure if I even know how to pronounce your name, but I've seen you've given me a lot of compliments over the years, and I appreciate it. So thanks for joining. It's nice to see you here. If anybody has any questions that I've missed already, just please go ahead and ask them again, and I'll I'll try to come back. Cause this uh, this feed is not great. Try to, I'm just bear with me. I'm just organizing the the comment feed. Okay, great. Thank you. I think I'm definitely going to be getting the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro pretty soon. Uh, I'm just waiting to see if they're going to have a Black Friday sale or not. Uh, I just I keep asking around, and it it seems like it gets nothing but good reviews, which is good to know because I I've mentioned before that I used to have the very first Wacom Companion, and I did love it, but it had a lot of shortfalls, and it sounds like all of those have been fixed, so that's cool. But anyway, as soon as I get that, I'll I'll try to share my experience with it, with that thing. I recently found out that you can resize the brush in Clip Studio Paint just by dragging. You you hold two buttons. I don't remember which ones they are, but if you Google it, that'll come up. Um, I want to answer this question by. Uh, Kaylin, Kaylin FX, have I ever used a similar workflow in Illustrator for coloring? So I, I've talked about this before. I, I'm not a fan of Illustrator, uh, not not to talk badly about it because it's it is a great program, but for me it's just so different than the way I typically work that uh, it feels it gets frustrating. Um, I'm always making mistakes and and uh, and stuff. That being said. Illustrator is very hard to avoid. I, I often have to use it when designing logos and things like that. So what I typically, I do actually use a very similar workflow where I actually usually draw the line art in Manga Studio and then I uh, vectorize it in another program and import it into Adobe Illustrator and keep the line art on its own separate layer and then basically go in and color things, not not each color on a separate layer so much, but like one group for uh, for colors, and uh, maybe then like another group for highlights and another group for shadows. You know, um, Illustrator to me is just missing some things that seem like common sense that have not been added to the program for decades. Uh, I mean. 
just the ability to rotate your canvas, that's been in Photoshop for a long time, probably over 10 years, I think. And Illustrator just can't seem to get it done. Um, then the, uh, the other thing is just like a lasso tool. Like, I wish you could just draw a lasso and then draw a shape inside that area, you know? But instead, what you got to do is use the, uh, the Pathfinder and create different shapes and cut them out of each other and, and all, this, all this shit that just... Uh, as soon as you start doing that, it no longer feels like drawing to me. It, it feels like uh, just like 3D modeling or something, like building... And, uh, and that's not to try to, to talk badly about artists who use Illustrator by any means, because they do amazing things. I'm just saying, for me, uh, and the way I work, it just has never really worked out. Uh, and to answer your question, the program that I use to create vector artwork is called... Uh, it's a lame name. It's called Vector Magic. And the problem is it is expensive. It's like 200 bucks for the program, um, which for me was worth it because of how often I use it and for how well it works. But if you're just like a casual user, that, that might be a deal breaker. But let me tell you, if you do get it, like it works. It... Um, and I know most of you who use Illustrator, Illustrator are probably familiar with being able to live trace raster artwork into a vector, but if you've done it, you know that it, the results are far from perfect. Um, and I mean, in my case, they're unusable, really. But when you use Vector M Magic, it, I, I hate saying that name, it's so lame. But when you use Vector Magic, it works I'd say 100%. The line art that you draw in this program, it becomes a 100% vector. It's crazy. Um, it takes some noodling with the settings, but uh, once you do it, you just save that setting and you just use it every time. So, very cool. Um, you can even, you can use it to actually vectorize the flat colors too. And it does a really nice job with that as well. Uh, but it does not work, of course, with gradients very well so so I hope that answers your question um, so Dan I want to answer Daniel's question um, it's kinda like I I planted you in the audience here uh, he's asking if I sell my Photoshop brushes so I, I make these brushes in manga studio and I've been selling them for a while um, I've finally gotten around to converting all of the ones that I could convert into Photoshop. So now I just have to basically get them uploaded to my website and uh, make all the marketing materials and whatnot. And I hope to do that like in the next couple weeks. So when I do, don't worry about missing it because if you follow me on social media, it's probably all I'm gonna talk about for a while. Uh, so sorry about that in advance. But yeah, I, I'm pretty excited about it because I, I use Photoshop a lot more now than I, use, than I used to because the brushes that I had in Photoshop that came with it, it just, it, it just didn't fit. It wasn't a good fit for me, and these brushes are a lot better. Um, so anyway, be on the lookout for those. Uh, Patrick Sullivan uh, asked me, is there any kind of imagery I won't draw with a thousand question marks? So I don't, I don't know if, um, if you're being serious or if you're just saying that it's crazy how many different things I draw. I, I love drawing different things every day. Like that's my favorite thing about uh, being a freelance illustrator um, is that at, at, at my old job or really any full-time job eventually you're going to be just drawing kind of the same things day after day and uh, I've even heard some things from uh, I'll never forget this this guy from Pixar came in uh, to, to Penn State I think when I was going to school and 
you know, he was talking about how great the job was, but at the same time, he said that for an entire year, all he was drawing was birds. You know, like that was his job, was to draw birds. And he said, over time, it just became cumbersome, right, and boring. Uh, so anyway, I like, I like what I do because every day is a new job and uh, it's something different. But to answer your question in a different way, maybe this is how you meant it. Like, is there anything that I won't draw? Um, yeah. Um, I don't draw... I don't get asked this very often, but I'm not going to draw anything, like, pornographic. Um, not, not really because, like, I'm... I have some huge moral stance against it. It's just, uh... It's not, it's not worth the risk of, like, my name being attached to something that other people would find hugely offensive, right? Uh, what else wouldn't I draw? Um, there have been a couple times where, like, white supremacist groups have contacted me looking for, asking me for artwork, which is kind of wild. Um, so I, uh, I impolitely declined in those cases. Um... Other than that, there are a lot of things that I won't draw. Um, I won't... If the subject matter is just something that's just totally foreign to me or something that's completely uninteresting, um, then I probably wouldn't draw it. I probably would turn down the job. Um, this may be surprising, but I, I probably wouldn't take a job that's like very deeply religious, uh, like, like, let's say it, someone wanted to do a children's book and it was all, uh, it was, a, it was biblical stories or something. And that's not, that is not because, uh, I have, I'm uh, offended by that. It's because since I don't connect with that, I, I wouldn't want to, I would feel like I was faking, if that makes sense. So, so there you have it. So someone's asking me if I'll come to Mexico City, uh, you know, Mexico. So last time I was in Mexico was my honeymoon, um, and it was a great time. Uh, I would, uh, I'd love to go back to Mexico. Um, maybe uh, give me a place to stay, and we'll talk about it. I don't, I don't know what, what is the art culture like in Mexico. Like, do they have conventions and things where people sell art? And I have no idea. Thanks for the invite. That's quite a drive for me, though. Um, Daniel is asking me, uh, oh, yeah, so you're asking the brush that I'm using to color this. Well, you're asking if that brush is going to be available in Photoshop. The trick is, for one, I've been jumping back and forth to a lot of different brushes. So it's hard to say which ones will be in there and which ones won't. The hardest part about converting my brushes to Photoshop is just the engine obviously works so differently that there are a lot of cool effects that I can do in um, uh, in Manga Studio that you can't do in Photoshop. So those, unfortunately, especially the pattern brushes, they won't be um, they, they won't translate, but something like this, like one of these texture brushes that I was using, uh, that one, that one will work, no problem. Like this one here. But anyway, thanks for the question. Oh, sorry, I've been missing a couple YouTube comments here. Um, El Ninja de Disco. Uh, let's see. Asked a bunch of questions. Sorry for missing all of them. Um, how long did it take... Oh, this is a really good question. How long did it take for you to make a living from digital drawing? Um... So, 
I've been really lucky in that my first job out of college in 2004 uh, was a full-time illustration job. Um, and then from that job, I got another job and then worked that for, se for seven years and then became a full-time freelancer in 2012. So that's f five years ago. So I was, I was really lucky to get a job out of school just doing this full time. Um, but, you know, my first jobs as a freelance illustrator did not pay, or I mean, not, sorry, not a freelance illustrator, but as a full time illustrator right out of college, uh, did not, did not pay very well, you know, so it, it took a while to really get to the point where we were secure and doing well. Um, I always say to people, like, if you are trying to make a living as an artist and it's and finding it really, really difficult, the best thing to do, I think, is to go get a regular job, something that is steady, that you can count on, and then when you come home every night, just sit down and watch tutorials, practice, build an amazing portfolio. Do that for, like, three years. You know, and then at the end of three years, I think that you're, you'll have something that you could either start pitching to be a freelancer or start pitching to be a full-time artist at, at a company. Um, I don't know. I wish I could tell you that I knew exactly how it works, but uh, but I really don't. Sorry, I can't be more helpful there. Well, and your comment is, uh, you don't have stuff online anymore since it had been stolen and you couldn't do anything about it. So if, if you've listened to me before, uh, you're familiar that my artwork gets stolen all the time. Um, in fact, I got a story about that. But it unfortunately is just the double-edged sword of the internet. On one side, it's extremely beneficial because my work can be seen in ways that 10 years ago, 15 years ago especially, that it never would have been possible. And I don't do any work locally, so if it wasn't for people finding me online, I would have no job. This, I mean, that's not an exaggeration, okay? So that would be the first step right there. If you want to be, uh, if you want to make a living from this, you got to get your art out there, period. Uh, so I would, I would fix that. And yes, it sucks to have things stolen. Absolutely. Trust me on that one. Uh, but there are a few things you can do. I mean, one is never post high resolution artwork for one. All of these things, by the way, all these tips, they're not foolproof. Uh, cause I do all of them and it, it still doesn't prevent everybody a hundred percent, but always, uh, post a watermark on your artwork. The watermark doesn't have to cover up the artwork 100%, but sometimes just having a statement there on the image that says this is created by so and so, uh, you know, copyright, whatever, that does stop a lot of people because sometimes, I've had this happen a lot, like some people steal things and they don't even realize that what they're doing is wrong. You know, they just think it showed up in a Google image search and therefore it's theirs. So the other benefit of doing that, of course, is that it's another way for people to find you because images have a way from separating from their original post pretty fast. So you definitely want to have like a little tag that says where this came from. Second of all, um, avoid posting your artwork in places where theft happens all the time. So avoid things like Fiverr. Um, I would say avoid deviant art. I don't know if that's going to be a popular statement, uh, but there's a lot of theft that goes on there. Um, anyway. <clears throat> so, uh, get back. You're asking me, do I prefer Clip Studio Paint over Photoshop? And the answer is definitely. Um, and you're asking me, what what are the differences? Um, I'm not going to go into them right now, but I would suggest 
if you have time, I have a video on my channel uh, that actually breaks down in about 10 minutes all of the benefits, all of the cool things that are in Manga Studio that are not in Photoshop. Um, and just watch that video, and I, I think it will sell you on the program. It's awesome. I still remember making that video. It was like three years ago now, I think. Maybe even more. But I was just so excited about all the cool things that you could do on the on the program. I just started jotting them down because I didn't want to forget them. And I realized I had enough to kind of make a video. So well, that was a boring story. Um, whoop the freaking do how are you buddy thanks for coming you're asking I wish Wacom would propose a loyalty customer program to give people who have spent lots of cash with them can get exclusive discounts in, on future stuff yeah I agree with that um, I've certainly given Wacom a lot of money the thing about Wacom is that their things last, at least for me, they last so long. Uh, like, I've had this Cintiq, I think, for, I think, seven years. It's at least six years, all right? And it still works great. And and by the time I bought it, it was already kind of an older model. So, uh, so if I, even if I had a loyalty program, I don't know how much I'd be able to cash in on that. Um, I do wish... I just wish everything at Wacom was like two hundred dollars cheaper. You know, uh, I don't, I don't dispute that they're the best. I lo I love them. I think their stuff is great, but, but man, it's expensive. <laughs> Hopefully, all this new stuff that keeps coming out will drive down their prices a bit more. We'll see. So the, um, I see a note here that someone bought the Wacom Companion and it only lasted 18 months. So that that's frustrating, uh, um, and that means you probably didn't get a refund either. Sorry to hear that. Um, mine, I had the Companion 1, and mine lasted at least two years, and then I sold it to somebody else, and I don't know how long it lasted for them. So who knows? Uh, I don't know. I'm... I'm hoping that these new models are better. It seems like they're a lot better. Oh, and whoopty freaking dudes asked me what happened to my mobile companion. I, I didn't buy, I haven't bought it yet. Um, and if you're asking about, oh, I had one a long time ago. One of the first models, the, the companion one. And, um, I took it back, or no, I'm sorry, I didn't take it back. I sold it to somebody else because I just wasn't, I wasn't using it enough, but mainly my problem with it was that it, you couldn't plug it into your screen to be like another Cintiq. Um, and they fixed that on the new models. I think you still have to buy an adapter for it. But to me, that seemed really stupid because I wanted to have kind of a backup Wacom, if, if you know what I'm saying. And uh, anyway, to not be able to do that was a pain in the neck. So what I'm doing here, I'm just I'm putting these shadows basically on a multiply layer, and I'm just choosing kind of like a light pinkish color, and I'm just going through with a pen brush. Normally I would do I would use something softer to color these in, but the style of this illustration I wanted to kind of be like a cell shading look. So that's what we're doing. So Tracy Smith, hey, hey buddy, how's it going? Um, says that at Harvard they pronounce Wacom uh, Wacom. So, so there you go, everybody. Um, let's see. There was a good question in here somewhere. 
Oh, Ken Armstrong. Uh, this guard, you can see it's all like coming apart. Um, it's by Smudge Guard. And uh, it's basically to do a couple things. It reduces friction on the screen, so you can move your hand really fast. Um, it also keeps it from like, you know, getting smudgy and stuff like that. Uh, and they're great. I, lo I love it. It's just, I've said this before, like if you work in an office and wear this thing, people will make fun of you nonstop. Um, that's why I left the company actually, went out on my own. Um, but also, after a while, it gets, well, you know how, like, you don't, if you don't wash your, your gym shorts for a while, that's what happens. Um, there was a great question here. I'm trying to find it. Uh, oh, yeah, here we go. So, Callan FX is asking me, to speak a little bit about a daily routine as an artist. So how much sketching, production, warm-up, how do you split the hours in a day? Um, so, we, uh, my wife works with me, and we kind of plan our day to in little chunks. Um, I normally work on three different projects in a day. So I might sketch one project and then work on the inks for another and then work on the colors for another. Um, that way I always have things moving in the pipeline because I can do the sketch, fire it off to a client, and then while I'm waiting for their feedback, which sometimes can take a while, uh, I start inking another piece and then fire that off and then color another. Um, I'm kind of envious of artists who seem to have time to do like warm-up sketches and things like that uh, I just have never found the time because I'm, e I'm either always working on freelance projects or when I'm not there's a million little things to do for my business like updating my website or portfolio or, d or doing YouTube stuff like this um, I'm trying to sketch more in a sketchbook but even that doesn't happen I had to skip uh, uh, Inktober this year, uh, which is too bad because when I listen to successful artists talk about their days, it seems like they always reserve a time to just sketch for themselves, you know, and uh, I would like to try to do more of that, but unfortunately in this business, like a lot of my time is spent just answering emails, uh, answering quotes, answering questions stuff like that. Um, my wife helps with that now, but uh, it's just a reality there. Uh, so it, to give you a little more info on my daily schedule, like I usually spend the first 40 minutes of the day or maybe, I, I try to spend the first half hour only on emails and then get right in the drawing because I find that I'm the most productive right in the morning um, then lunch rolls around, I eat lunch and, and try to do uh, two other things. And then I stop at five. And that's it. Sometimes I work in the evening. I try not to, but sometimes it can get hard not to. I have two kids, so it can be tricky to work uh, a lot while they're still up and around. Hey, thanks for the compliments, uh, Anthony. Um, yeah, uh, whoopty freaking do is talking about the smudge guard glove here. I feel like I'm like selling this on uh, what's that channel where they sell shit. Uh, it does make your hand hot. Um, there's no question about that, so it gets kind of sweaty, but. This one with just the one, like they make another one with two fingers, just the one finger is enough. And go ahead and have as much fun with that as you want.
I also recently signed up for Periscope. I've never actually used that, but um, I found a way to also broadcast live to Periscope at the same time. So if anybody listening would prefer to watch me on that, go ahead and uh, give me a follow or a like or a hug or whatever the heck they call it. Because I probably don't have any followers on there. Alright, so I'm almost done with the shadows, and then I can start moving into the highlights, which doesn't take quite as long, but like really starts to bring things out. One thing that a lot of people forget when they're drawing eyes is like the shadow that the eyelid makes. So make sure to include something like that. All right, let's see. Just a couple more quick shadows. You know, I want to just really quickly answer a question that keeps getting asked. Uh, a lot of people are always asking me, what the difference is between Clip Studio Paint and like, and the EX version, which is quite a bit more expensive. Um, I do have EX, but the only reason I bought it was because I was working on a, a children's book and I wanted to use what they call like a pages manager, which allows you to kind of, kind of see all the pages in the book that you're working on at once and and quickly switch between them. Um, and it actually ended up not even being useful to me. Uh, I ended up instead just kind of saving them as Photoshop files and using Adobe Bridge to sort of see all my pages live. So unless I'm wrong, unless there's some other feature that I'm missing, I don't think anybody needs EX unless you're really working on a, uh, a book, on a, you know, a collection of pages for a comic book or a children's book. That might have changed, but uh, my advice when people ask that question, I always just say just start with the first one. Just start with Clip Studio Paint It's because it's much cheaper. And learn that one. Then do a little research to see if there's a feature in the, new, in the EX version that you really, really need. And you can always upgrade. So you're not losing any money. It's just you just add the upgrade cost and that's it. Hey Daniel, um, how hard was it to learn manga after using Adobe? And is it lighter on the computer than Photoshop or, or Illustrator? Yeah, man. So this is one thing. This is one of the best things about Manga Studio is that I don't know why, but it is so much faster for me anyway. And I have a really decent machine. I got a really decent computer. Um, but it handles enormous files, especially if you save it as the, uh, the clip file structure um, it works with these files like flawlessly it's amazing um, and you can even you can use giant brush sizes and all that kind of stuff uh, the only disadvantage is you know how Photoshop can save a file while you're working on it that's pretty cool and and I do miss that so in uh, in fact I should probably save this but when you save I can't work on it until it's done saving you know but it's, sa it's already done saving, so it's pretty quick. 
and this is a large file. This is about 6,000 by 6,000 pixels, um, which is, I think, 20 inches by 20 inches at 300 dpi. Um, as far as working, oh, not only does it work faster, I should say, but it's so much more stable, which is funny because you would think Adobe would just be the best, right? But um, just today I had Adobe Photoshop crash. And uh, again, I've got, I have a really decent machine. Um, it's the updated version. I wasn't doing anything, you know, mean to it or abusive. Uh, and I find the same thing with Illustrator. I have, I have a fair amount of crashes, you know. And with Clip Studio Paint, it just does not crash. It's great. I don't know why that is. Well, I guess, I guess it's probably because I think Adobe just every update they just cram something else into it, and normally those updates are things that I don't need. They're like three D things or they're things for photographers. I, I wish they would set it up like modules so that you could pick and choose which features you wanted to activate. Anyway, hope that answers your question. Yeah, a uh, great question, uh, SC Part. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that, but um, is asking me if I've looked into Affinity Designer. I, I've tried it twice now. And um, what I would say, my review in one sentence is that it's close. Uh, it's almost there um, in terms of being like an Adobe Illustrator replacement, but it's not ready yet. Uh, I've seen some really excellent things done with it, but there are just too many features that it doesn't do that is kind of inexcusable. Um, you know, like, for example, offsetting a path is something that I do all the time. And I think a lot of designers do when you're working in Illustrator. That would be like to have a path and then you can off, you can grow it, right? Um, there's a million, there's a, a million other little things. Um, there's some small annoyances and things like that. However, I think they're on the right track because the, the interface of it is cool. Uh, the, bonus features it does have that are better than Illustrator are really interesting um, for sure. Like being a, basically being able to combine raster and vector into the same document is pretty neat. But I really wanted, I really wanted it to replace Adobe Illustrator because I'm still using CS6 and I don't feel like spending another $20 a month to get Adobe Illustrator CC and I know that eventually I'm going to have to. Um, it's already starting to happen where clients send me files that I can't open. Um, so what I do is I'm so cheap, I just I sign up for a trial for Adobe CC, open the file, and then and then cancel the trial at the end of the month. You can do that a lot. I think a lot more than they're aware. But anyway, can't get away from that uh, forever. Um, This is a great question. Uh, many artists suffer from carpal tunnel syndrome, and I'm drawing all day. Do you have any pain in your wrist? So I'm so lucky that I do not. And I think the reason is because, because of this setup. Because I'm using this, which is very like ergonomical, this um, Nostromo uh, Orb Weaver keypad. And then just the fact that I'm using this, like it's a very, I'm not clicking a mouse or doing like bending my wrist to type on a keyboard all day. Um, instead, I'm really just leaning against this surface and drawing. And I'm you don't have to push a lot of pressure or anything like that. So anyway, I also I got a standing desk, um, which I'd like to do a review of, a review of eventually. And um, I think that really helps too because when I'm typing emails and stuff, I'll, I'll convert it 
to a standing desk and uh, that means every hour I'm making sure to stand up and, and you know do healthy stuff like that I don't know I think it's funny that I'm talking about being healthy right now I'm not the spokesman for that but great question Yeah, Matt, uh, Matt Woodworth, how you doing, buddy? Um, makes a really good comment that uh, Adobe, or I mean, sorry, Affinity Designer actually will open Illustrator CC files. Uh, so I've done that too. Like I, I downloaded the free trial of Affinity Designer and, and used that. I should really just buy Affinity Designer. It's only 50 bucks. All right, so let me do the highlights. So this is usually the stage where I look at this thing and I kind of decide how the colors are working and I just wanna I just need to brighten up the colors a little bit and then the shadows maybe lower them alright then normally I go in I flatten the shadow layer Hey Mark, uh, how's it going Mark? Thanks for coming. Um, here, uh, sorry I'm looking for a question here. I, if I missed your question, please go ahead and ask again because I know uh, there was a really good one that I, that I think I missed. I'm having something just so I could, I'll start rambling about something while I'm waiting for a question. I had something really weird happen um, that I'm in the middle of right now. It's, I'm not going to use any names or actual identifiers, uh, but there was a piece of artwork that I did long ago, uh, probably about three years ago, that it ended up being the logo of a pretty famous band. Like they have millions of followers. And the artwork has changed just enough to probably be legal. All right. Um, but if I showed if I show any artist, they would, they would agree that, that it was mine. Um, try not to not use any specific information. But anyway, but anyway uh, so, uh, so, well, well, anyway, anyway, it's hard to it's talk, hard to talk about, about the specific info, info, but, but, but I tried to hear the best I could. I could. The crazy, the crazy thing, thing that's happened now, now is that, is that I guess, I guess this band, band has a really bad, bad reputation, reputation. Uh, uh, for, for sex crimes, sex crimes. To put it lightly, put it lightly. And, and there's a good community love of Anti-fans anti anti is the best, best, way, best way, way to describe them. And, and for some, for reason, some reason, they, they are convinced, convinced that I am working with this band. band. When, when, when that's actually, that's actually the, opposite. the opposite. You know, you know, they they they, they took my art, and, and I've actually I've spoken, spoken to the art or the artist, excuse me, who did it, and that's something that complicates things as well because I'm actually friendly with the artist just by coincidence. That part's not important. But what's important and crazy is that a lot of these people now, the anti-fans of the band, are like are harassing me. It's the first time this has ever happened. Um, as close to a scandal as I've ever been, I guess. Uh, it's really unfortunate. Um, a lot of them are just, I guess, looking out for me. Like they're trying to warn me not to work with this band. But the rest, or some of them, are uh, borderline harassment um, to the point where one of them literally called me twice last night at 3 a.m. in the middle of the night 
it's it's freaking insane. Um, I can't I can't believe I'm talking about this, but uh, but anyway, in in leaving insane comments on my company's page about like, ugh, man, I don't even want to I don't even want to repeat it, but it's not good. Um, and I've had to delete them and block them, and it's it's been a mess, and uh, it's totally unfortunate because. I had n I have nothing to do with this band, and uh, and even if even if I did, even if I was working with this band, it kind of sucks because they are they would basically be bullying me into not working with them. Um, it's crazy, man. The internet is crazy, and I'm I'm not very old. I was born in '82, but I'm old enough to be able to say that the world before the internet wasn't as crazy as this. But as I said earlier, I owe my career to the internet because um, I don't I do not do any work locally really. So if it wasn't for the internet, I'd, I'd have to move somewhere most likely. Um, it would just be a totally different life. Anyway, Sorry, let me get to some questions. Oh, God damn it. Hey, sorry about that. Is the mic better? Can anybody comment to see if the uh, the mic sounds better? Sorry about that. I will be getting a new mic. Um, it's weird. It works fine for like 40 minutes, and then it makes me sound like an alien. They didn't... Uh, nobody mentioned that in the Amazon reviews. It's too bad. It wasn't a cheap mic either. Uh, I think it cost me like 50 bucks. Uh, so I'm using... Uh, I don't know how well you can even see this unless I really, really zoom in. I'm using this brush that I made called the Ink Rub. And it basically just, as you pick up, it sort of ends in a texture. Which I really love because it sort of gives it uh, like a little bit of a hand-drawn look. And it looks really cool when it's printed out. Oh, that sucks. So, so are you saying that through my entire, uh, my entire, like, 2020 story reveal right there, um, the mic was going crazy and I sounded like an alien. That's great. That figures. I guess maybe just see it as like I'm in the witness protection program or something and that was uh, disguising my voice. Alright, I am, uh, I've been broadcasting for about an hour here so I am going to wrap this up in just a few moments. If anybody has a question that I missed, please go ahead and ask. Um, otherwise, I will be back next Friday. Um, yeah, whoop de doo they probably were attacking. See, what's crazy is, with the band, it's not even the band, it's not the band attacking me. It's like his anti-fans. It's insane. It's crazy. And literally, Four days ago, I never knew this band even existed, and now I'm in the middle of a of a thing. It's ridiculous, man. Because I'm just uh, anybody who knows me personally, like I'm just a, a just a guy. Like I, I'm just a guy in his in his studio trying to draw things and turn that into money so I can send my kids to college and and all that grown up shit. I'm not trying to uh, anyway. Sorry. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so if anybody has any questions, um, here's a question. It's too bad that 
CSP doesn't have enough tutorials. Um, well, I think if you go looking, there's actually quite a few tu tutorials. Um, I mean, I, I've made several, and there's some by a guy named Robert Marazzullo. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right. There's also some made by Doug Hills. Uh, I think he was hired to make the tutorials. Um, and in fact, I kind of like that... I, see, I love Clip Studio Paint over Photoshop because the community is much smaller. So instead of like 4 million tutorials about Photoshop, like making fire text or whatever. There's fewer tutorials, but I think they're better. Like, I think they just, they get to the point and you don't have to shift through so much, uh, so much garbage. Anyway. Um, let's see. Uh, have I ever thought of making a book of images for ink practice, like a coloring book, but for inking? No, I haven't thought of that. I mean, I've been really wanting, for years I've had on my like to-do list is just to make a portfolio book of my artwork in general, and I never end up having time to do it. Um, I would really, I really want to try to do that this year, or I mean in 2018. I don't know if anybody would actually buy that, but I could probably do a print-on-demand thing so I don't have to take that risk. Um, yeah, as far as like printing stuff that people can ink over, I, w I appreciate that, first of all, but I think you would be better served by, um, by like going to some of the, the great comic book artists and printing out their pencil drawings and inking over their pencil drawings. You know, I think you would learn a lot more that way because they are a lot more versed in lighting and, and that kind of stuff. Um, let's see, there's one more question. All right, great guys. I, is is my mic? Is this a new comment? Is my mic still causing trouble, or is this an old mu comment? All right. Anyway. Okay. Well, thanks. I'm gonna sign off. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Uh, you know, please follow me where you can. Um, please go to my website and buy shit. Um, please join me next week. Every Friday I'll be here at 2.30 uh, Eastern. Um, and if I missed any of your questions, just post them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks a lot, guys.